Hello and welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this episode of the digital publishing series, we are going to learn about two new folio overlays options, the pen and zoom and the web content. In the previous episodes, we already discussed the folio workflow, where you create a folio file with articles, and each article is a separate InDesign document. So if you would like to learn more about that, make sure you check out these previous episodes. And also, if you are not sure about how to apply folio overlays, check out the previous episodes where I talk about hyperlinks, panorama, and the image sequence options. Because in this tutorial, I am going to mention these as something that has already been discussed. So first of all, let's have a look at the pen and zoom option. As always, I have to select something in my uh, pages. In this case, I'm going to use this image here inside this image frame uh, to be able to apply an overlay. The reason why it's called overlay is because whenever you add interactivity, it's always on top of the actual content. So that's why it's over it. And um, whenever you have an image selected, you will have these five options available in the folio overlay panel. But what I'm going to use now is the pan and zoom. So once I click on that, the only option here is that I can turn it on or off. In this case, I'm going to simply turn it on. So now that I have this interactivity added to this image frame, so I have the pen and zoom folio overlay applied to it. I can test it in the Adobe Content Viewer. But to be able to see that, first I have to save my document. So I save this document. And this is article number one. So I have to go into the folio builder, click into uh, the articles. So we'll go into the folio itself to see the articles and then select that article that I just edited. And then from the drop down of the Folio Builder panel, I can choose Update. So I have to make sure I update it because otherwise, if I check the preview, it will be the state before it was changed. And it's not enough to save the document. It's important to update the Folio. I mentioned this also in previous episode that if you use the offline folio option, then it will be a little bit faster, the whole process whenever you update your content, because then you won't have to wait for this part when it's uploading the article to the Adobe Cloud. Because I have it online, I have to wait for this, but it doesn't take that long. So now I have the article updated. And as always, remember, we have to go back to the folio itself. And then once, once that's selected, we can click on preview and then we will be able to see it in the Adobe Content Viewer. If you have your iPad connected, then you can check it there as well, but it looks exactly the same. So I'm just going to stick to the uh, Content Viewer for now. And then I am going to go to that uh, article, which is the next article. And I just have to go a bit down and that's the image. So here I can, first of all, click on this image and now I can pan around, so I can move around the image and I can also zoom in and out. If you are in the Adobe Content Viewer, you have to use the scroll of your mouse to do this uh, zooming in and out. If you are using the iPad, then this is something that you can do with pinching out and in uh, with your fingers. And just tap and drag around, you can move the image. So that's the pen and zoom option. It's quite straightforward and easy to understand how it works. The only thing you have to make sure is that you click on the image before you want to interact with it. So if I come back here and I click on it, it will receive it as a page transition. So as going to the next page, I have to click on the image and then start doing the interaction. So for a DPS content, it's useful to somehow show to your users or readers that this image is actually interactive and that they can zoom into it and look around in, in uh, more details. So to, to show that somehow, it's good to have like a, a button on it, which shows that this is actually an interactive image and just say something like uh, tap and zoom to see more details. So that can really help and make it more uh, user-friendly to work with these kinds of overlays. 
So now that we discussed the pan and zoom option, let's have a look at the other option, the web content. So I'm going to close this. And it's very similar, that's why I keep these two together in one tutorial, because you will see it works very similarly to this uh, pen and zoom option. So I'm going to create a new page in my uh, document, uh, because I don't really have enough space here. So what I'm going to do is to go to my pages panel, and I am going to create a new page. So just click on uh, create new page and uh, I'm going to create that new page for the landscape format as well. And I'm going to make sure I have the page tool selected and set it to landscape. So I have both, uh, both of these pages set up and all I want to do is to add the frame here. So I'm just going to use an empty frame and I am going to use the fully overlays and choose web content. Once I have the web content, I can use a file, an HTML file, which can be on a server. And if it's available, then people will be able to use it through the folio. But uh, it's best to use a URL. So I'm just going to use the URL for vector tots. So I'm just going to type in the, uh, the full link and I'm going to type in vector.tutsplus.com. And once I have the URL, I can decide whether to use these options or not. The one and only option which is uh, turned on by default is the allow user interaction, which is obvious. It's definitely something we will need. And we can also use scale content to fit. So it will resize the website, uh, the content on the website to the frame that we have on our page. Now we can make this frame a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to drag it up a bit and keep it like that and then we can also make sure that it has some some, some kind of image here so i'm just going to use my browser and uh, open vector tots and create a um, poster image while well, you creating a screenshot that will be my poster image so i'm just going to drag it here to show it to you and i'm going to use the screenshot uh, keyboard shortcut and create the screenshot like that now that we have that ready, we can come back to InDesign and drag and drop that screenshot onto my frame. So even though I placed it in an image into this frame, it still has the web content option. So I didn't override that. I just simply created a poster image for this. And uh, I can always, again, add the text on top of this and say, uh, click on this frame to access the website. But I'm just going to keep it like this. And uh, I can copy this quickly, the whole uh, setup that I just created here to my other uh, orientation. So I just go to the landscape orientation and paste it in there as well. So now we can uh, go back to the Folio Builder panel and go into this articles uh, option. So I'm going to save it, first of all. That's article number one. And I'm going to update it. So drop down and update. So whenever you use web content, of course you have to be online to be able to see it. So it won't be embedded into your folio file. It will be uh, accessing the website that you link to uh, through the internet. So you have to make sure you are connected whenever you use this feature. And now that my article is updated, I can go back to the folio file and preview it in Adobe Content Viewer here on my desktop. So let's have a look at it. There is our uh, landscape format. I can use this because I updated in both versions. So I just have to go down to the fourth page. And then as you can see, we have a little uh, indication on the cursor that this is actually something interactive. So once I click on it, it updates and loads the website. And after this point, it works just like a browser. So I can scroll up and down and I can click on these links to be able to access them. So it loads in the article. I can zoom down, see the final product and so on and so forth. And I can click on this arrow in the Adobe Content Viewer to go back to the articles. So we can always exit from the browser mode and go back to the actual article. And then once again, if I want to interact with the uh, web content, I just have to click on it. 
And the good thing is that it's going to even remember where I was last time. So if I already uh, played around with the web content, once I click on it again, after coming back from a different page or different article, it will jump back to where I was last time in the website. And that's all I wanted to show you in this episode of the digital publishing series. Hopefully you found this uh, episode as well useful. And next time we are going to keep on discovering the other features from the folio overlays and I will show you how to work with scrollable frames. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time here on Tuts Plus.